peace and blessings fam and welcome to homestead heart and today i am going to be canning some squash and this is yellow squash that is right out of the garden these were all harvested um, a couple of days ago and they have been kind of chilling out in the refrigerator till today and I'm getting ready to blanch those and I'm going to show you the process by which I do that and get everything ready to get it all canned. I have some onion here that's going to go in my jars as well along with some canning salt right here and also I have my bands right here that are ready. The lids are over here on, uh, you can't see, but they're back there sitting in a nice pot of really, really warm water so I can let the rubber on those soften up. And then here's my pot of water that was boiling that I'm getting ready to put the squash in and let that sit for about two to three minutes. Some people, and of course I got my canner on, um, I have my three inches of water in the canner and I have this on high heat. Now for everybody that's new, this is a pressure canner. There's my lid right there and um, all of my canning tools that I'm going to be needing for today as well. Now to begin, I will say this, the government no longer recommends that you can squash. However, my grandma, my auntie, people have been canning squash since before I was born and now the government don't want you to do it <laughs> for different reasons. Now, I'm canning squash today. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I am canning yellow squash and onions today, okay? So I'm gonna bring, a, bring you along with me on this uh, First episode, tis the season to be canning. And the first video we're doing, yellow squash. All right, stick around and I'm gonna show you what's next. Okay, so now I'm back. I'm at my water, my, my hot water. And until I can get a stand to hold this camera, I'm doing this one-handed y'all. So I'm really trying to be dedicated <laughs> with it showing you these bringing you all these videos for canning so all i'm gonna do is just take my squash actually you know what i'm gonna do i know what i'm gonna do okay so i'm just gonna simply pick this squash up and get it all in the pot okay without splashing myself with boiling water go ahead and get those blanched for about three minutes two to three minutes I'm going to set my timer on the stove for three minutes, I think. Okay, and then I'll take those out of the hot water, get them back in the glass bowl. My jars are already in the oven, sterilizing. See them in there? They're already in the oven, getting their sterile on. They've been in a 225 degree oven for a minimum mum, 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 of 20 minutes, okay? I've already washed them in hot soapy water and rinsed them well, and now they've been hanging out in this 225 degree oven. They've been in for 30 minutes, um, but that's the jars, and I'll be taking those jars out here in just a moment, and we'll get the canning process started. My fire is up really high underneath my canner, and that's only to get the temperature up in the water. Okay, and it's getting hot. It's getting hot. Well, while I get the jars ready, we're waiting. Okay, all right, folks. So I'm going to bring you back in just a moment once the squash is done blanching, and uh, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, I'm back. So it's been three minutes. Turn the timer off since the squash has blanched or set in this hot water here. Three minutes is all. It didn't cook it or anything. Now, typically, you would, you know, to stop the cooking process, you would take it and put it in some cold water, ice water. But I'm not doing that. I'm just going to leave them nice and hot because they're about to go into some very hot canning jars. So I'm not going to put those in cold water. I'm just going to go ahead and take them out of this pot. And this water that I've used here, 
to boil these uh, the squash in. This is also going to be the water that I use to ladle into my jars, okay? And there was another step that I didn't show you, which was how thick did I cut the squash? How thick is my squash? All right, that's all of that. Okay, all right. So now look at my squash pieces. You can see how thick they are. If you would like to cut them thinner, you can. But that's how thick I have mine cut, okay? And like I said, you can cut them much thinner than that if you want. Some people actually do. But that's going to be fine for me. I'm putting them in pint jars and my jars are not going to be packed, okay? So now, I've already taken my jars out of the oven, okay? And I now am going to start filling my jars. All right, so I am back. And I am about to fill the jars. And remember the tools that we talked about. I use my jar lifter here to lift my jar out of my pan with my hot jars and just place it here. And then I release it and just sit that there. Now typically you would use your funnel to put your product in the jars. However, I don't need a funnel for this. I'm just going to use my hand and I'm just going to put those down in the jar. I'm just going to lay them down in there just like so. And remember I said I'm not going to overcrowd my jar or anything like that. Now, these are squash uh, directly from the garden, so I don't know how many pounds this is that's going inside of my jars, okay? And so I'm going to stop right there. That is well under, what a spike, okay. <laughs> that is well under that one inch head space mark there. And I'm just actually, I'm going to put one more in the side right there. Just get that in the side. And then I'm going to add a few pieces of onion on the top of that jar and actually y'all if I had some garlic powder uh, I could put some garlic powder in here if I wanted to I could add a lot of things and I'm also going to add just a half a teaspoon actually I don't want to add a half a teaspoon I'm going to add a little bit less than that because I would rather that it be um, have not enough salt and way too much. So I'm only gonna put a fourth of a teaspoon of salt in here, okay? Just a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. That's it. Now, I'm, I'm going to fill these jars with the hot water now, okay? Let me grab my handy dandy ladle. I forgot to get my ladle out, but I have it now. Let me just rinse that out. Don't, those, don't that cloth look so beautiful in that jar? I think it looks fantastic. Okay, let me get my pot of hot water. I'm gonna get another burning myself. Okay. Okay, uh, back after the mishap. So now I'm going to use my ladle and I'm just going to ladle in the hot water into the jars over the squash and I'm going to leave a one inch head space for the water. One inches, that's it. I'm going to reduce the temperature on my canner until I get the squash in. But do you see the water stops right here at that one inch head space mark, okay? Now remember I talked about the importance of getting air from inside of the jars. We do not want air trapped. Oh my goodness, I wish you could have saw that, but watch this. I don't know if you could see that. Well, it didn't do it on this side, but there was so much air. I don't know if you could see those bubbles that are releasing. You turn the jar. Just turn it. You see the bubbles that are being released? from the bottom of the jar, from in between the squash. So I just take this all the way around the jar like so. And that helps to release the air bubbles. I'm gonna sit that there. Now, I have my rings, my bands back here, because remember they were sitting in water that was um, really, really warm. 
and I'm gonna sit those here and this is where my my nice little tool my magnet comes into play I'm just gonna reach over and that magnet picks up the lid so easy see that and I'm just gonna place that right on top of my squash put my bank my uh, band on finger tight you don't want to crank down on this okay just finger tight Ooh, it's kind of warm now especially with the hot water in it but let me show it to you look at this look at how beautiful that squash looks in that jar isn't that gorgeous you could do the same with zucchini but that is absolutely beautiful and i'm going to take this and get it down inside of my pressure canner and I'm gonna show you what that looks like once I get them all in, okay? Gonna grab another jar, get it right there. I'm going to get my squash down inside. And you know what, y'all? I forgot to do something. And this is a step I always forget to do. I don't know why, but I always forget to do this. And I'm going to show you what that is here in just a second when I do this jar right here. So as you can see, I'm just getting the squash pieces down on the inside of my jar. Ooh, that's a nice big one. And I might not have a lot of squash jars, but that's okay. That's perfectly okay. Get those little pieces in there too. Then I'm going to add my few little pieces. Look at that beautifully little cut onion. Get the onion pieces down in there. You see how I got them cut? You see? Get my onion pieces down in my jar, just a few. Then, or you could put as much as in there, in there as you like. It's up to you. And then I'm going to add in my one-fourth a teaspoon of canning salt, okay? You don't want to use salt that has iodine in it. Though. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my hot water. I'm going to ladle in my hot water inside my jar. Look at that. That is so gorgeous. And I'm going to bring that up again. One inch headspace. Now let me show you this headspacing tool in action real quick. You see this tool right here? This is a head spacer. And the way this operates is you would take this tool and you would place it on the lip or the lid of the jar. You would place it wherever, however, however, uh, whatever the amount of space is that you need, that's where you would place it. So if I place this, this little half square right here on the lid, you can't see that. But this is a one inch head space. And that means that the product in my jar, the distance from the lip of this jar to the product inside of the jar is one inch, okay? And if I come above that, that's gonna be three quarters of an inch, right? That's going to be um, a half inch, and then a fourth of an inch, right? one fourth of an inch it's going to be the last one here and i wish i could see that my eyes just ain't that good no more mm -mm, mm -mm, i can't even see it mm -mm. so if you're not used to canning i would just use the head spacing tool then after that i'm going to go ahead and grab my lid and my band and get that on the jar that jar is hot, it's fingertip tight. Remember, don't crank down on this. It just needs to be tight enough. So when you put it on and you get that first area of resistance, then go ahead and turn it a little more and that's it. And I know some people are more heavy handed than others. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? And that's just onion salt and water and squash. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Okay, now let me take this off. Because there are two things I forgot to do. I'm going to take both of these off. Put that back in the hot water. The first thing I forgot to do was debubble. Let me get the air out of here. Because that air sitting inside of the jar, it would prevent my jars from sealing. Okay? So I'm going to go around this a few times. And I'm going to get the air out of these jars. Okay? 
and then I'm going to clean the rim of my jar because that's something else that can keep your jars from sealing. Now what I use is just plain vinegar. I just dip my little towel here in the vinegar just lightly and then I go around my jar. Go around my jar and make sure that it's nice and clean and then I will now grab my lid Okay, then I'm gonna grab my band, get that on there, finger tight, and in the canner, this one will go, okay? Now, I'm gonna take the other one back out because remember I told you that was something I forgot to do? Well, that's, shucks, that's what I forgot to do. I forgot to clean the rim of my jar. I don't want anything to keep that from sealing. So I clean that with a little vinegar. I'm going to put this lid back in the hot water just in case there was something there. I'm gonna put this one back in the water just to clean it. And then I'll put a new one on and put my ring back on, okay? And that's it, finger tight. I'm gonna get this one back into the canner. I'm gonna grab me another jar get my squash down in there all right and these are some nice size pieces of squash too y'all let me get those down in there and it looks like i may actually get not more than four pints i can't see it being more than four pints if that okay and get a few of the small pieces in there and then I'm going to add my onion. Isn't that beautiful? Get the onion in my jar. Then I'm going to add that one fourth of a teaspoon of salt right over the top. And now I am going to go ahead and add my hot water. I'm going to get that later in. Mmm. It already looks good. One inch head space is all. I'm gonna remove that. I am going to debubble my jar, getting the air out. See all the bubbles coming up? You see that? Look at all the bubbles as they rise to the top. Because as you move the squash around, you, you release those air pockets, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do, because once I release the air pockets, I noticed that the water went down in this jar. Just a little bit, it went down. So that means I need to add just a little more water, not a lot, just a little to bring it back up to that one inch head space. And that's something you have to pay attention to when you're canning. Okay, it's gonna debubble again. And of course it's at the one inch head, it, it stayed this time at the one inch head space mark. All right, I'm gonna grab a ring, I mean a lid. Sometimes your magnet wants to grab more than one lid. Get that on there, get my band on, finger tight. I'm gonna grab my jar, then the canner it goes. Isn't that beautiful? In the canner it goes. All right, now, like I said, I got four pints of squash. Okay, four pints. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. All right, and I'm back. And this is what this looks in, like inside. Now, my pressure canner will hold m way more than this, of course, right? If I were to pick this jar up, you see how it sits on top of the other jar? And that rack that you see in the bottom, if you were canning a lot of pint-sized jars, then you would have a second rack that would sit on top of your first level of jars and then you would stack them that way. So now, I got these in there, just the four little pints. 
if I had something else that I could process at the same amount of time as these, I would. Why didn't I wait to like to get more squash? Well, because I didn't want to take a chance on my squash getting old before my other squash was big enough to harvest and can. So I'm going to go ahead and can up what I got. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead now and get the lid on and I'll bring you back here in just a second. Okay. The lid is on my pressure canner. Okay. I had to seal that and that's something that I have to do with two hands. <laughs> and once the steam starts venting out of this, it has to vent like that for 10 full minutes, a steady flow of steam for 10 full minutes has to come out of that vent. Okay. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead now and set my timer for 10 minutes because this has to do this for 10 full minutes. Okay. So let me get my timer going. And then in 10 minutes, once that has vented for 10 minutes, then I'm going to come back and what I'm going to do is place my pressure regulator on top of that vent. And when I do that, that's going to hold the pressure inside. And then I'll be able to see my pressure rise right here. Okay? So I'll bring you back here when we are just about ready to put on the pressure regulator. All right. And we're back. And this has been venting now. For just about 10 minutes, we have about 30 something seconds left on the timer for this 10 minutes. And as you can see, the steam is coming up pretty good, nice and regular. So what I'm going to do now is get my pressure regulator. And all right, so now I'm going to go ahead now and just pop this on. Okay. And what that's going to do, turn this timer off. What that's going to do now my pressure is going to start to rise, okay? And the pressure in here is going to rise really fast. It will be up to 10 pounds of pressure in under three minutes. Okay, we're back. And we are at 10 pounds of pressure, okay? 10 pounds, but that's going to keep rising. So what I need to do is reduce my heat so that it will stay at 10 pounds. So I'm going to reduce this gradually. Right now I'm on a medium. So I'm going to get this to a medium low. Okay. Yep, just in between the medium and the low and I'll leave it there. And then what I'm going to do is make sure that this holds at 10 pounds because you see it already was just about to go past 10. And so I'm going to see what it does. And really when I'm pressure canning, um, I have to reduce this thing down so far till it's not funny. Okay and let it hold at pressure for 10 pounds. Now these are pint sized jars of squash. These are gonna be processing for 30 minutes. If these were quart sized jars of squash, they would process for 40 minutes, okay? So let me turn my timer on for 30 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and let these can for 30 minutes. Remember these are pint sized jars of squash. I'm going to let these process for 30 minutes. And after the 30 minutes, I'll bring you back and show you what I do next. All right. We are back. All right. So the timer is about to go off. The squash is processed for 30 full minutes. Okay. 30 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. And the timer is done. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the timer off. Now, now that the timer's off, these have processed 10 pounds of pressure, maybe a little more, that's fine. Um, uh, it's looking like it's like at 10.5 or something, that's fine. But 10 pounds of pressure is what this is processed for. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn my fire completely off, okay? So now what do I do? What do you do now that you turn the fire off. These have processed for 30 minutes. What do you do? You do nothing. Now this has to sit right here. Do not bother anything, okay? You might be tempted. <laughs> if you are new to canning, do not bother this canner, okay? This canner has to depressurize. Even though I've turned the fire off, all the processing is done. This canner has to depressurize 
that dial has to go from 10 to zero before you can touch it, okay? And even when it gets to zero, you cannot touch it unless this nipple in the back is completely down, okay? Now normally when that nipple falls, your pressure is done. It's gone. And when that nipple falls, the pressure's down, your gauge is at zero, then and only then can you remove this regulator. When, when those two things have happened, nipple down, gauge at zero, then and only then do you remove that regulator. Okay, I know I've said it a million times, but I really want the best for you. I do not want you to lose your product in your jars, so make sure you follow that information closely, okay? So, and I don't know if y'all could hear that, but the jars are still boiling inside of this. So even when it comes down from pressure, it doesn't mean it's not gonna be hot. Cause it's gonna be very hot, okay? It's gonna be very hot. All right, let's see if we can catch it when the nipple falls. There it goes, yay, we did it! All right, the nipple's down, but we still got just a little bit to go to get that to zero. Maybe another one minute or two minutes or so. All right, so now let me show you where we are. Um, even though this is down, the pressure's all the way down to zero, the nipple's down in the back. What I did was I still just let those jars sit in the pot for an additional three or four minutes. I just wanted them to sit. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove my regulator. Beep, beep, look at that. Nothing's coming out. No steam, no pressure, no nothing, no problem. And then sit that to the side and I'm going to go ahead and open my pressure canner. Now, I'm... all right, and we are back and these jars are done processing. Those are the four pint size jars of yellow squash and I'm gonna go ahead and get those taken out and show you what they look like I got all right and we're back so I'm gonna go ahead and take the jars out one of the things I'm gonna tell you you want to put as much space between your counter and the jars if you have a wooden cutting board that would be perfect um, I take um, a towel and just put it over the cutting board but I don't have the cutting board anymore I got rid of it so let me go ahead and take these jars out because they have already started doing something that I wanted you to hear them do and that's that beautiful sound they make when you know that you've gotten a good seal on your jars, okay? Look at those, don't they look gorgeous? Did you hear that? That's the pinging sound that we wanna hear when we can. That's letting you know that your jars have successfully sealed, okay? Just look at those, aren't they beautiful? Look at that, listen at that pinging. Just listen at that, let me show you. Look at those jars. Remember we talked about space, air space in the jars too. Now look at the space in this jar right here and imagine how much space it would have been had I not blanched those for at least two or three minutes, okay? And remember I said the jars are still hot even though the pressure can of came down from pressure. If you could see that, these jars are still boiling inside. Look at them. They're still boiling inside, okay? Now, one of the things that I want you to realize is that G these jars, once you take them out of the canner, these jars, you're not to touch those. Ping, love that sound. Okay, so these jars, do not bother these jars. They need to sit on your counter until the following day. Don't try to pick them up and shake them and all that kind of stuff and be wiping them down, cleaning them off. You don't want to do that while they still doing that, do you? <laughs> it's hot. So you don't want to bother them. Let them sit on your counter overnight and uh, come back tomorrow, the next day sometime, and the jars will be ready for you to wash and uh, label them, date them, and get them put away. So that's it. That's all there is to canning yellow squash. And I, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my Sharpie that I have in my little collection and I'm gonna come right to the top of this lid, 
right there in between all of the writing and the ball sign. And I'm going to write yellow squash. And I'm going to put the date on it. I'm not going to put today's date on it. I'm going to put tomorrow's date on it. Why? Because tomorrow I'll be able to take the rings off, confirm the seal. And once the seal is confirmed that, hey, it's a good seal, I'm going to write that date on it, which is going to be tomorrow, the uh, June 13th, 2017. And I will then put those away in my pantry. And these will last in your food storage. If you do it right, they will last several years, okay? And if you notice, they're not mushy looking. Look at how beautiful they are. They're not mushy anything they held their shape look at them no mush just beautiful jars you see those back there look at there just beautiful i love it i love it i love it i love it all right y'all and that's all there is and the one thing i forgot to mention that i normally do but i forgot to do is that when i wipe the rims of my jars with the white vinegar i will take the remaining of that vinegar and I would pour it inside of my canner in the water because what that does is it keeps the water from clouding up your jars and then you know you have to go and wash them again so what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna have to wash my jars just in case they have a little cloud to them I'm gonna have to wash them with some warm water and soap because I forgot to put the vinegar in that's okay it doesn't hurt your, your jars or anything like that you just got to wash them that's it but all right folks that's it that's also canning yellow squash the same process it would be for zucchini so thank you so much for watching homestead heart peace and blessings to you all see you